So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 Subject Test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. 11. The graph of x squared minus 1 times y equals x squared minus 4. They want to know, okay, they want to know how many uh, asymptotes and what types of asymptotes it has. Um, so one way you might consider doing this is to just get y by itself and plug it into your calculator and take a look. Um, SAT2 is very calculator heavy. I tend to prefer non-calculator methods where possible, but if the calculator can save you time, we definitely want to make sure we're using it intelligently. So I'm going to do a, a non-calculator method that I think is fast enough, but if you want to graph it and pick it off the graph, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, but either way, we need to solve for y. So let's divide by this quantity here, this x squared minus 1. So we'll get y equals x squared minus 4 over x squared minus 1. And now what we can do if we're looking, so let's talk about horizontal and vertical asymptotes and where they come from. When you want to find vertical asymptotes, you have to ask yourself the question, where does the denominator equal 0? But you also have to ask an, an additional question to that is, do any of those values that make the denominator 0 come from factors that cancel with factors in the numerator. In other words, well, let's do this by example. So let's factor the numerator. So the difference of two squares. So we get x plus 2, x minus 2 over x plus 1, x minus 1. So any value that makes the denominator 0 is a candidate for possibly being the location of a vertical asymptote. So we can set each of these two factors equal to 0. So we have x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals plus or minus 1 are candidate locations of two vertical asymptotes. And the reason I say candidates is because one other thing that we have to check is whether either of these factors cancel with a factor in the numerator. In this case, they do not, because we don't see any x plus 1 or x minus 1 in the numerator for them to cancel with. If we did, that would represent the location of a removable discontinuity or a hole, which doesn't really change the shape of the graph. It just means that the function is not defined at one point. That's not the case here. So these two factors do stay right where they are, and these are true locations of vertical asymptotes at x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. So that actually helps us eliminate a couple of choices because a and e are not showing um, vert two vertical asymptotes so we can get rid of a and e. B, b, c, and d all have two vertical. Two vertical, two vertical, two vertical. Um, so now we're interested in horizontal. The way we approach that, we don't have to really have it in this factored form. We can look at it the way it was originally. And we really want, what is a horizontal asymptote? It's, it's, what, it's what the graph trends toward as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. So even if you haven't had pre-calc, you can still examine the end behavior of a function. Uh, and we're not even going to graph this, but we can just kind of ask ourselves the question, what's going to happen as x gets really large, approaches infinity, and what's going to happen as x gets really small, or approaches negative infinity? So as x approaches infinity, what's going to happen to this graph? x squared is going to get really big. Minus 4 compared to x squared is relatively insignificant, right? Because this is going to get astronomically huge, and negative 4 is going to pale in comparison to that, that hugeness. And in the denominator, minus 1 plays a negligible role, and x squared plays a very important role because it gets very large very fast. So what we do is we look at the highest order terms in the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator's highest order term is the x squared, same in the denominator. So this thing can basically be approximated as, we can say, y as, as x goes to infinity, y tends toward 
x squared over x squared, which is 1. So we have a horizontal asymptote of 1 as x approaches infinity. The other th situation that we have to examine is what happens as x approaches negative infinity. If it does something different, that's another horizontal asymptote. But basically the same thing happens. Negative infinity squared is the same as infinity squared. So just like the previous logic that we just went through, we can neglect the constant terms. We focus only on the high order terms in the numerator and denominator. And we observe that they both get infinitely large as x goes to negative infinity. So we get uh, negative x squared. Well, I guess I could write negative infinity there, but either way, it doesn't make much of a difference. It still tends toward 1. So even though it comes from two different, uh, two different logical arguments that we made, it's actually the same number. So y equals 1 is the only horizontal asymptote. Horizontal. And this was, these were the verticals. So the best choice is going to be C, one horizontal and two verticals. Again, if you throw this original function into your calculator, you'll be able to actually see that uh, that's exactly, you know, you can, you can just look at the graph and pick it off that way as well. Hi, thanks for watching. If anything's still confusing or you need a little extra help, drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.